So concurrent, uh, there are a lot of things that are concurrent, but what I want to emphasize today, concurrent doesn't imply parallel. So what do I mean? Let's take an example. Suppose you have to do a lab report, and uh, let me get my fake pen here, and um, you know, it takes me half a day to do my lab report, and I'm writing and writing and writing the summary, the hypothesis, the results, all that kind of stuff, observations. And <clears throat> suppose I want to do this quicker. Well, if I have lab partners, and say I have three or four lab partners, uh, we each do the experiment together, we write the, uh, we write the report, and each does a section. So I'll do the introduction and so forth and so on, and uh, forgetting the fact that, uh, and assuming that we're all competent and can do adequate job, which, well, in my day wasn't always the case, but we'll leave that alone for now. Uh, we can do it. The lab report has a property of concurrency. We can do it in parallel parallel by using multiple people. Well, let's push this concept a little bit. Suppose now I figure, well, it took me half a day to get this done on my own. I bring, I bring these three other or four other cronies in, and now it takes an hour. Excellent. I want to get done sooner so I can get back, get home early and watch Oprah. So what's the idea? I'll bring a hundred people in. And you know what? We'll each write one sentence, and we should be done in ten minutes. And I know what you're thinking, dumb idea, and of course it is, because there's a lot of coordination that needs to be done. Um, there's a lot of issues overhead that gets that happens with um, that many people involved in the project. So is that concurrent? Certainly, we can write each sentence separately. They are separate units. Should it be done in parallel? No. Not in this case, unless you've got like really smart people and that can look over each other's shoulder in some effort, and it's not a good idea. So, the point is, concurrent is often used to mean parallel all the time. It's not the case. Concurrency is a property of whatever process or thing you're talking about. Parallelism is a property of the how you're going to execute the concurrency. So, to bring even more special effects to this video, red. Uh, we've, what I want you to know is concurrent does not always imply parallel. Because given the choice of using a hundred people to help me do my lab report and one, meaning me, uh, scientist that I am, uh, I could get done a lot quicker than a hundred people. So just because it's concurrent doesn't mean we always want to go parallel. And we're going to find this over and over as one of the big issues in high performance computing and computing in general. So remember, concurrent does not always imply parallel. Parallel is a function of the machine, a property of the machine we're going to talk about. Concurrent is a property of the algorithm or the process. Okay, got that? Good. Now, there's a lot of other issues that surround this, and those of you in the know will be thinking, what about Amdahl's Law? What about this? We'll talk about those. For now, we just want to keep it simple. Plus, I've got more videos to make. I need more topics. So, we'll be covering these things. We'll talk about Amdahl's Law. We'll talk about different types of parallelism and so forth and so on. Data parallelism, task parallelism, and how this is going to pan out in the future of programming in general and in HPC. So, that's today's video. We'll see you back next time. Pay attention. Concurrent does not imply parallel. I'm going to check out my, the rest of my markers now. So we'll see you next time.